Potion Conry is not a new idea. It means various things, but potion is often interpreted as a compass, a direction that you want the organization to go. And Conry is the management control systems in order to align the organization toward that objective. It was uh, first adopted by Toyota in the 1960s as part of total quality management. At that point, Toyota's quality was worse than the American auto companies, and Toyota had ambitions to become the best in the world in quality. <laughs> so this is what management sees if you sell Hoshin Conry and their consulting companies that truly believe in Hoshin Conry and have a process for implementing it, and they go and they sell it to management. And what the senior leadership sees is, yes, that's what we need. We need everybody in the organization, all the functions of product development and accounting and manufacturing and whatever it is that you do, all these functions align to serve the customer. And in addition to that, the CEO always has a vision and always has targets they would like to achieve. And they would love it if everybody lines up behind their targets and does a great job. And by the end of the year, they've achieved everything that they hoped. Uh, at, well, first of all, you're breaking down the annual numbers in a planning process. And in this one definition, Hoshin kind of aligns the activities of people throughout the company so the company can achieve key goals and react quickly to a changing environment. So because the planning process itself includes these little round things in the diagram called catch ball. And what's happening is that the top is going to the next level down and say, saying, here's, let's develop a strategy. And there's going to be a lot of give and take in that strategy. Based on that, let's set five year business, a, business, a five year business plan and turn that into an annual plan. This is what we have, and what I, when I say this is what we have, I mean over 90% of the organizations I visit. This is common, traditional corporate America, healthcare, government, we're bureaucracies. So we have a lot of functions if we're a big organization, and those, and the managers and supervisors within those chimneys, within those silos, have learned through their careers to make the numbers. And they've learned that if we make the numbers, we're okay. What the numbers represent are the outcomes of some sort of process. And those outcomes could be a dollar cost savings. And, the, and also, I am going to be interested in the numbers within my chimney. And we all know about the chimney problem, and that's actually one of the drivers of lean is to get people to start to think horizontally in value streams focused on the customer instead of purchasing, wanting to simply get the lowest bid, and engineering wants to get the most engineering capability, and manufacturing wants to get the simplest design and, and a schedule that's easy to make. So each of these functions has their own interests, and what we're really trying to do with Ocean Foundry is align those interests but in an organization where people have gotten in the routines, the habits of making only their own silo numbers, we are going to have to break those habits. We're going to have to literally change the culture of the organization. Let me just show you what they did. First of all, the president has done some, has met with his board He's of leaders, They've done some analysis. They've looked at the current situation. They looked at where they are. And they have come to the conclusion that there's a lot of opportunity to reduce cost by decreasing business cycles, by reducing lead time. How they came up with that, we don't know. But they came to that conclusion. So they have both. Now, in this case, this is not a strategy. Again, it's just simply cost reduction, and we don't know what the broader strategy is. But the point is that they thought a little bit more deeply about how they're going to reduce the cost. 
and they were going to focus on lead time reduction to reduce the costs. So then we're going to zoom in a little further, just the sales part. And then sales looks further and they say, really, there's two things we do. One is direct sales to new customers, and where we're calling, customer, calling on customers. And another is sales support to existing customers, where we already know them. They might even call us, uh, or we might talk to them. But those are really different processes. We, in fact, even have different people who are working on those processes. And in, the, in direct sales, there's really no system to evaluate and address what they might possibly object to in our product or service. And then they even come up with a solution, which arguably they, is premature in the planning process, but they come up with an initial solution, which is that customer feedback in the user lab when we're developing our product and service is not doing a good job of anticipating customer objections. Therefore, the customer objections come out in the last step when they choose not to buy, when they actually look at the product carefully and it's not what they really want, and they choose not to buy. But it's really the point of cause is really in the development process. And then for sales support, they find that the users are having a difficult time using the product and the product trials are really unsuccessful and that's because and they they believe that's because they don't have good training in how to conduct these product trials and they don't have better input and feedback into the development process so again it's pointing toward the development process in in sales uh, they're by calling a solution they're going too far what they're actually doing is not a solution so now they go back and they say, for sales, we're going to ask both direct sales to and sales support to improve by 50%. That is to get qualified products to actually buy the product after trying it after the trial and improve that by 50%. Why 50%? I'm not sure, but that, that's what they came up with. So, again, they've done some thinking. I, I'm not holding this up as a great example, but they've done some thinking, and there's now more focus. Direct sales has a clear picture of what they have to do, and they also know that if they're going to be successful, they're going to have to work with product development. They're going to have to work with the people who are doing user tests. They're going to have to work with a customer in order to improve these trials. So it's now defined in a cross-functional way. And finally, uh, again, not a, a slide from, from Mike, and he has a great uh, slide share that talks about the coaching process, starting with value stream mapping, the current state, the future state, and we're actually, we actually now have the future state for an entire value stream, and we have uh, measures of the current state, where we are in key performance indicators, and if we achieve this new value stream, here's where we will be in the future state. Here's the outcomes that we will achieve in cost and quality and whatever your objectives are. And now that we have this future state value stream app, uh, William, the vice president, is responsible for that entire value stream. And Nancy is, uh, he's responsible for several value streams, actually. And then Nancy is responsible for one value stream. And she's led the process of creating the future state. And the future state is giving the vision. You could say that's part of her ocean economy would be, here's the value stream map. And then here's the, here's what I'll achieve if I achieve this value stream, this, this process. And then Nancy is going to uh, then be working with Steve, who has one piece of that future state value stream to achieve, one loop, who works with Roger, who has one uh, process 
and then Roger's working with the operator of that process. Uh, so in this case, we have alignment, and you go to their storyboards. And William is coaching Nancy, Nancy is coaching Steve, Steve's coaching Roger. And they're meeting every day at their storyboards, and they're understanding the direction. They're checking uh, to make sure we understand the direction. We understand the current state. This is the next start condition, which is aligned because Steve will make sure it's aligned and because he's responsible for Nancy, and Nancy will make sure Steve's aligned because she's responsible for William. And then we're going to be doing this iteration. This working pattern for improvement is going to be this iteration that's happening on a daily basis. So, in short, Hoshin Conry is an evolving capability, and it won't solve your problem to bring it in at the beginning. The root cause of the problem is actually the skills, capability of your leaders and the culture of your organization. I'll see you. Uh, thanks. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.